Hey everyone, today we're going to be generating PDFs in Java. Um, we're going to be using Apache FOP and uh, Timeleaf uh, templating engine. Um, so uh, the way Apache FOP usually works is it, it takes XML and it transforms it using XSRT into this uh, the full file. Um, so yeah, there's a bit more on that on the on the website. We're going to avoid the XML. We're going to avoid the XSRT transformation, and we're going to do the transformation essentially using Timeleaf, which is a templating engine. Um, the templates are going to be an XSL full, uh, and that's what's going to be used to um, render the actual PDF. So we'll, we'll see how that looks in a moment. Um, in terms of the time leaf templates, um, if you're not familiar with it, this is kind of the syntax. There's a few kind of elements, attributes that you can add to elements and um, to do things like replace the text or add attributes or kind of you can, you know, bits of logic like, you know, doing loops or kind of um, if statements, etc. So I won't go too much into detail here, but we'll just kind of dive into it. And um, the only thing I'd, other thing I'd point you towards is, um, yeah, the XSL4 documentation. Uh, that's something you kind of have to to learn a bit about if you want to kind of know how to lay out the, the pages in the PDF. Uh, but it's not too much of a learning curve, so that should be okay. Um, so yeah, uh, let's get started. So I'm just gonna I'm gonna start this project from scratch, um, just so that we can see how how to get there from from zero. So we're gonna do uh, generate PDF. Um, I use Gradle as my build tool. It doesn't really matter which build tool you use as long as you can get the dependencies in. Um, so I'm just going to start here. So other thing worth no noting is I, I do have a complete version of my screen over here. So I will be essentially copying and pasting the code in um, instead of uh, typing it all out just to hopefully make the video a bit more or a bit shorter. Um, so yeah, but I'll, I'll I'll explain all the lines as I go as I go through. So we'll do it essentially step by step. So hopefully that will be opening. Yep, yeah, here we go. So um, let's open that here. Let's make that a bit bigger. So the the first thing I'm going to do actually is just I'm going to replace this build.gradle file um, just force of habit one that I have here's kind of one that I made earlier. Um, so. There's nothing kind of special going on here. The only thing they need to focus on is uh, the dependencies. So we've got Timeleaf, like we talked about, we've got Apache FOP. Um, we've got for testing JUnit, standard thing. Assert J just for the assertions, it's just a habit of mine. Um, and the last one that I've not talked about is Apache FOP, um, Apache PDF Box. Uh, so PDF Box is another way to generate uh, and manipulate PDFs. Uh, it's got kind of a, a Bit of a nice kind of declarative um, approach. Uh, I prefer the Apache FOP approach with the with the templates, especially with Time Engine uh, with Time Leaf. But this is another another way of doing it. Now, the only reason I'm bringing this in is for testing. So this is basically our function to extract text out of a PDF, and and that's what I want to use in my tests. So that's the only reason uh, I'm bringing that in here. So uh, yeah, let's get started. So we're just going to dive into tests. We're going to remove the kind of boilerplate and let me copy and paste in the text and the test that I have prepared. Cool. So what I'll do is I will try to um, zoom in here. There we go. Perfect. Um, and I'll copy over actually the import statements just so I don't want to do that here. So hopefully that's uh, big enough. Um, so we're starting off with the test. We want to generate a PDF and we're, gonna, we're just going to assert on the text hello world and we're going to pass that text in. So we're going to pass it in dynamically and hopefully assert that it's on the, on the PDF page. So we're just instantiating a new object, creating this dynamic model. And this could be a Java object, this could be wherever you want. Um, note that I've got pages here. This is just to show off some of the um, some of the features of Timeleaf. Uh, I wouldn't suggest actually uh, doing pages like this because uh, Apache FOP or XSL4 has got its own kind of solution for that. Um, yeah, so we're we're going to call a generate, you know, PDF method. It doesn't exist yet, so we'll create that in a minute, uh, passing through the model. And, our, and yeah, worth noting that this is going to return a, a byte array, which captures essentially the that's the the the, yeah, the structure of the uh, the PDF. So typically, when you're dealing with Java binary data, that's that's um, byte array is the the way to go. Um, we've just got a, a, a void method to to save it, so we can have a look at we can have a look at it. Um, and all that does is write it to a yeah to a file. So we've just got to write writing to a file. Uh, and the final step is yeah convert it to PDF, convert the PDF to text, and that's what we're going to do 
using um, PDF box. So that just strips the text and returns it as a string. Cool. So there's one import I forgot to bring in, which I'm just going to add in now. There we go. So uh, I'm just going to create this method here. Um, and hopefully that's big enough for you guys to see. That's going to return a byte array. Um, right now it's not going to do anything. Move that. And actually, I'm just going to go back and run the test to make sure that it fails. And it will fail. Um, perfect. So basically, we need to get this test passing. Let's, um, yeah, let's let's do that. So I'll point you at this point to the the Apache FOP uh, documentation. So this is just to show you where where I learned how to to do this. So in the documentation, um, whatever version that you're using, you can see that. Um, yeah, using Apache FOP, they've got a few, uh, a few good uh, pieces here. The two ones we're focusing on is configure and embed. So configure is essentially configuring the, the FOP engine, uh, um, and that's essentially done with a with a XML config file, which is right here. Um, this defines a few different features of the engine. Most importantly, if you're going to do stuff like custom fonts, this is where this is where that happens, um, and you've got the kind of the path to to that. So I, I won't go too much details. Uh, the documentation is quite quite good here. Um, so what I'm going to do is I have a copy of that file. So I'm just going to copy it into our resources, fop.xconfig, and you can see that's, a, that's just a copy and paste of the defaults here. Um, the next thing I'll point you to in their documentation is in the embed section, and they basically have a basic usage pattern, which is this is how you generate a PDF um, and you know with, with Apache FOP. Um, you can see that they're they're saving it directly to uh, yeah to disk. So I've changed that around. So I've just refactored that bit so that it returns the out, the output uh, as a byte array uh, output stream as opposed to just saving it directly. So essentially copy paste this and fix it up a little is uh, is what I've gone for. So I'll show you what that looks like um, right here. So let me copy and paste that in. Cool. There we go. Uh, it's not copied the imports for some reason, so let me just uh, quickly do that. Cool. So we still have the generate PDF method. That's exactly the same. Um, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to press it, process that template. Um, we're going to pass it in the model. So we're going to process the XSR4 template, uh, and by process that I mean feeding it through to the template engine. Um, this is how you instantiate the template engine. This is time leaf you need to set a template resolver which basically just text, tells it where to find the, the the files in this case we're just going to stick we've said okay this is a class loader um just look in the root of the resources and you're going to be looking for xml files and um yeah by default set the, the character encoding um i'm going to copy over the actual fo file and yeah, so you can see there, um, I'll, I'll, I'll remove the, the previous way. So you can see there that, well, actually, yeah, I'll, I'll keep the previous way just to, to kind of show you how, how to do it in a static way first, and then we can uh, make it dynamic. So this is standard XSL4. This is uh, in their documentation. It shows a few examples of this. We just have a page, uh, and the page has a couple of blocks, similar to kind of divs, which it just says, hello world and page X. That's all it does. Static, no dynamic model there. Um, if we go back to the app.java, so with that, we go back to app.java, we can see that I'm just defining an output um, stream. We're reading the config file, passing that through to the FOP factory and creating the, uh, an instance of that you know, FOP engine. Um, we've got our source, which is the XSL full file, and that's, of course, spat out by the, um, by the time leaf engine. Uh, and then we're just actually hitting transform on that. By default, like I said, if you look in the documentation, it expects to transform XML using um, XSLT, but it's essentially going to skip all that because we don't need it. So it's just going to take the XSL file and uh, just render the PDF directly and return it as a as a pipe array. So we're going to go into our tests and we're just going to hit run here, and hopefully this will pass. Great. So we've got a passing test. Uh, if we go into our build generated PDF. Cool. So we can see that we have the hard-coded text. Uh, the final step is just to hook up the model, uh, and this is simply by updating the, the my full file. And this was essentially what I had earlier on, and I took it away. So if I change that, so you can see the only difference there is um, we've added a timely for each, 
in the pages so we're going to say for each page in model.pages and remember model comes from here um, model so one thing I probably glossed over is when we process when we're actually doing the processing of the engine um, you feed it through the file and then you give it a context and the context essentially defines what the um, the templates have access to so you can do some cool stuff with locales we're not doing it here that's the default but we're passing it in our model and you can pass in a map of how, wherever you want and whatever objects you want so it's got access um, to the model and therefore access to the pages uh, and the title which is also something we've defined in our uh, in our map so this one is just replacing the text and you can see that I've, I've removed I've just kind of done a self-closing attribute so I've removed the actual text here because it's gonna get replaced anyways uh, and with this for each we have access to this variable it's almost defining a variable and we've just added it as a text to this block here so uh, we're going to run this uh, one more time Hopefully this will also pass. Yeah, we've got passing test. And finally, we look at the generated PDF and we can see, there you go, hello world. And we can see page one, two, three. And that's the, the kind of list coming through. So yeah, you can kind of see um, how you can start building up a componentized uh, PDF page with different kind of different sections, etc. Uh, and Timely hopefully helps, helps with that. Um, I'd like to think this is a bit simpler than using XML and XSLT, so a bit nicer to look at. Um, so yeah, if you've got any more questions or comments, um, or if there's anything I didn't go over properly, leave them in the, the comments below. I'll push this up to, to GitHub and try link it in the description. Um, and yeah, have a good day.